Thanks for joining me today. I'll be discussing the Smart Factory and how it helps to support a more sustainable way of doing business and manufacturing. To get started, I'll cover the basics about sustainable manufacturing. For a more in-depth coverage of the topic, please reach out to me for a more comprehensive conversation. So what is sustainable manufacturing? There are almost as many definitions out there as there are books and articles on the subject. But in my study of the literature, I've found these common threads. The creation of manufactured products using processes that minimize negative environmental impacts, conserve energy and natural resources, are safe for employees, communities, and consumers, and are economically sound and profitable. Key aspects of achieving sustainability include waste management, environmental friendliness, operational safety, power consumption, manufacturing costs, and personal health. Note that economically sound is still a part of the definition. A move to sustainable manufacturing isn't a move away from profitability. The word sustainability is key though. This concept is meant to look not only at the short-term profitability of the company, but also the long-term viability. Just as an example, seriously degrading the environment over time will have many adverse impacts to the company's revenues and profitability. There are growing reputational impacts on consumer acceptance of the brand in the marketplace. This can also impact the willingness of many people, especially in the younger generations, to work at the company. And over the longer term, a damaged environment will create a challenging economic environment within which to operate. The goals of sustainable manufacturing are centered around what is known as the triple bottom line or TBL. Companies must still make a profit. This goal does not change. Nearly every manufacturing company in the world exists as a profit-making entity. The goal of the company should still be to maximize overall profits. The shift to sustainable manufacturing, however, looks at profitability over a longer horizon and within a larger context. In this larger context, sustainable manufacturing also adds goals and metrics supporting people, all the different stakeholders, and planet, the environment. Very often, these goals are in alignment, where there seems to be conflict between being profitable and the good for the planet, as an example. Sustainable manufacturing practices help to incorporate the longer term costs to the company of environmental degradation, harm to reputation, and more. One way that sustainable manufacturing practices seek to establish that more balanced perspective is through the introduction of additional KPI. These are some example KPI or scorecard metrics for sustainable manufacturing. For planet slash environmental, there are metrics that cover topics such as carbon footprint, use of reusable or recycled material, renewable energy rate, and water usage. For people slash social, there are metrics around satisfaction rate, training hours, safety rates, diversity rates, and social and community initiatives. For profit slash economic, there are the usual corporate metrics plus items such as the percentage of income for recycling programs. One of the key areas of study right now is how to dollarize the impact of these different metrics. Some of the metrics can be very easily correlated to a dollar value. Something like the energy used per thousand products will have a utility cost associated with it. And it is in the obvious best interest of the company to minimize that cost. But some of these metrics are more challenging. Everyone will acknowledge that employee satisfaction is important, but it can be very hard to associate a dollar figure for the value of that to the company. This can make it more challenging for companies to properly balance the various objectives. Most of us are familiar with the common refrain for consumers of the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. For manufacturers, this actually becomes the six R's. 
reduce is reducing the usage of resources and energy during initial manufacturing. Also creating product designs that lead to lower waste during the using stage. For example, more fuel efficient cars. Redesign using methods such as design for environment to redesign the materials to make it further maintainable or longer lasting. Reuse is the reuse of products or the previously manufactured parts after its first life cycle. This contributes to reducing resource consumption. And in this one, the focus is on the full product or major components that have their own bill of material. Recover is when components are collected at the end of the first life cycle, disassembled, clean, and prepared for the next life cycle. And here the focus is on the individual parts. Remanufacture is reusing a previously used product, restoring it to the initial state through the recycling of as many parts as likely or as possible without the loss of operation. And recycle is just uh, reusing the used materials that are typically considered as waste into the new materials or products. Another key focus is to minimize the byproducts, scrap, and other wastes from the manufacturing process. This can be accomplished through increases in manufacturing efficiency and quality, or through implementing circular material strategies for products in the field. To close out this introductory section, I wanted to highlight one of the key areas for sustainable manufacturing, minimizing the carbon footprint. In the US, manufacturing accounts for almost a quarter of direct carbon emissions, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Anything that can be done to reduce these emissions while still balancing the other goals of the triple bottom line must be done to slow the impacts of climate change. Now let's take a look at how smart and lean can combine with green. There are many different areas where smart and lean manufacturing can impact the goals of the triple bottom line. In many of my webinars and articles, I have focused on the combination of smart factory solutions with lean manufacturing and how that can lead to significant operational improvements. All of those improvements can help at least some aspect of the triple bottom line. A quick word about what I mean by smart and lean. Lean manufacturing and other operational excellence practices have been a key initiative for most companies since the 1990s. Industry 4.0 or smart factory or smart manufacturing Initiatives have become increasingly popular with good reason over the past few years. However, these smart factory initiatives have often run into problems where the projected value has not been realized from the solutions. For example, I compare implementing industrial IoT solutions to wearing a Fitbit. The Fitbit does exactly what it says it does, but you don't automatically lose weight just by wearing the Fitbit you still have to do the exercise and improve your diet. It's the same thing with these industrial IoT solutions on the shop floor. By and large, they do exactly what they say they're going to do. But to lose the waste on the shop floor, you still have to change people's behaviors and improve the process. By combining smart and lean initiatives, you can maximize the value realization from each one. So in the rest of this section, I'm going to look at common metrics across these different categories and how they're impacted by a smart and lean approach. Worker safety is a key focus for lean manufacturing practices and therefore the smart and lean approach. As mentioned earlier, this is a key focus for sustainable manufacturing as well. The first enabler to better safety is how smart factory solutions can help with standard work adoption and adherence. Many safety issues happen because workers either don't know the standard work or don't follow the procedures. Solutions, smart factory solutions can display work instructions in context at the work center to help workers allow or follow the standard work much more easily. Training can also be dramatically improved through the use of these solutions. Not only can technology such as augmented or virtual reality be used for the initial training, but process monitoring solutions can be used to track deviations to the normal process so that supervisors and management can reinforce training as the employee works the process. 
These solutions can also be used to monitor and improve visual, or excuse me, can improve workstation ergonomics. Motion tracking systems can be used to identify dangerous tasks and optimize workstation design. Visual analysis can replace repetitive measurement. Environmental tracking and alerts can also be critical to proper safety. And these solutions can also be used to connect to the machines to track when they're being operated outside of standards. There are three main areas where smart and lean solutions are going to help improve worker satisfaction and elevate the overall workforce. The first of these is training, both offline and at the station. AR or augmented reality capabilities probably have the most direct impact on employee training as that technology can make training significantly more impactful, less expensive, and more readily available. But the broader range of solutions can also provide many benefits. By displaying work instructions as described earlier, there's not as much training required for a new or different employee to step into a process and be productive. Also, as mentioned earlier, the solutions can help track deviations from standard work to help reinforce the training. And these solutions can also be used to do skills tracking and schedule the shop floor, taking into account who's qualified to perform which tasks. The second primary area is in employee safety, and we covered that in the previous section. And the third is in employee satisfaction. Particularly when recruiting and retaining a younger generation of workers, they want to be involved in something that is more interesting and rewarding. An operator role in the Frederick Winslow Taylor tradition will not keep employees happy or keep them at the company. Companies can increase their recruiting and retention rates by employing interesting new technologies, putting humans at the center of workplace design, engaging employees' brains as problem solvers, and generally making manufacturing more fun again. Quality is one of the biggest target areas for improvements to sustainability. Improvements to quality have many direct and indirect impacts on profits, but also on the environmental impacts of the operation. There are many enabling capabilities to improve in quality within the Smart and Lean Toolkit. The first among these is the ability to process and identify deviations. This includes tracking output measurements and plotting SPC charts, but it also includes tracking the detailed process variables and applying the same principles. By sensing and responding immediately to excess variation, it's possible to get the process back under control before the output is impacted. When failures do occur, having the detailed information collected by these systems allows for a greatly enhanced root cause analysis process. Smart factory solutions allow for faster and more complete analysis along with a far broader solution space. Predictive quality capabilities enable customers to utilize machine learning capabilities to go beyond condition monitoring and predict when a process is likely to start producing bad parts. This includes analysis for units that end up in warranty. For a complete set of data being captured and archived when later show up later in warranty claims, it's possible to correlate production variables to the units that end up in warranty versus those that do not. These solutions can also be used to enhance error proofing on the shop floor. One example of this is using AR for verifying that pick and place components are being selected from the correct bins. Another use is for shop floor systems to ensure machine settings are correct for the particular item being produced. They can also be used to monitor for deviations from standard work to enforce, help reinforce the training on the shop floor. Quality can also be significantly improved by providing in-context, hands-free visual instructions. When operators can easily see these instructions in the context of their work, it not only reduces the error rates, but also facilitates a greater variety of builds with less training required. And finally, for companies where the product is sensitive to environmental conditions, process adjustments can be made automatically. The metrics in this category of delivery relate to production efficiency, production totals, and related measures. While these relate most directly to the economic impact, any improvement in efficiency also represents an improvement to the amount of energy consumed, pollution produced, 
and other areas of environmental impact. Smart factory solutions help address these issues in many different ways. First, much like quality, these systems can provide detailed tracking of downtime and production information. This can be used for issue identification, root cause analysis, and improved problem solving on the shop floor. In addition, maintenance procedures can be completely revised to take great advantage of this information. Reactive maintenance time can be dramatically improved by increasing the mean time between failure, the first time fix rate, while decreasing that mean time to repair. Preventive maintenance can be improved by optimizing what procedures need to be run and determining the proper interval. Autonomous maintenance tasks can be prompted at the beginning of each shift based on the optimal routine. Condition-based maintenance can be implemented by looking at different process variables and performing maintenance when thresholds are crossed for things like temperature, vibration, power draw, and noise levels, et cetera. And this can be taken to the next level to implement predictive maintenance using sophisticated machine learning capabilities and a combination of different inputs. Visual controls can be implemented on the shop floor to create positive feedback loops, help with communication and more. Planning and scheduling can be improved through better understanding of the actual processing times and initial conditions within the factory and faster replanning. And lead times can also be greatly reduced by identifying and eliminating non-value add time between operations, improving shop floor material flow and coordination and reducing the need for work and process inventory by reducing process variability and setup times. Inventory is the next area that we'll look at. Inventory represents the consumption of materials, energy and other resources that have not been put to practical use yet by a customer. This has both economic and environmental impacts. Those impacts are highest for obsolete inventory that represents pure waste. Inventory policy across all three stages, raw, work in process, and finished goods, is heavily influenced by the performance within manufacturing. By lowering variability, increasing reliability, shortening lead times, and shortening the time between product runs, inventory can be reduced across all three stages. Here are some of the enablers for achieving those goals. All of the changes called out in the quality section apply here. By improving quality, it helps reduce variability within that manufacturing process. And the improvements in the delivery section have a much larger and more direct impact on inventory. Reducing manufacturing lead time is directly reducing the amount of work in process, reducing schedule adherence, and reducing setup times and manufacturing lot sizes allows for a significant reduction in the amount of finished goods that need to be carried, Raw material inventory can be reduced by improving communication with the vendors, having more reliability in the production schedule, and improving manufacturing agility to be able to switch to other products when one raw material stocks out. The combination of all of these factors can lead to great reductions in the total inventory in the company. All of the improvements in efficiency and quality discussed earlier will help with the environmental scorecard here. These will help reduce the utilities being consumed to reduce the quantity of waste being produced and much more. In addition to the areas previously discussed, asset level, mon or asset level metering provides manufacturers an opportunity to identify where they're consuming the most power so they can manage those processes more closely. For example, in a visit to Toyota's Lexington plant, I saw that they had created a process to ensure that machines get turned off whenever they're not scheduled to operate. This is just a very simple example, but using these smart monitoring systems to eliminate non-value consumption can help reduce your overall utility bill quite a bit. And our final category is cost. I left this for last, not because it's least important. I assure you it's not but because it is essentially the result of all of the other improvements. Smart factory enablers here are the same ones we've discussed throughout the other sections. Rather than being repetitive, I'll use this opportunity for some final thoughts. Many smart factory implementations are performed with a single goal in mind, such as implementing predictive maintenance to increase OEE. That's certainly a worthwhile project and goal, but as we've seen today, fairly myopic focus on single metrics 
misses many different opportunities for improvements on the shop floor, the supply chain, and the overall impact of the company. It's possible for, it's possible to utilize these projects to impact each of the triple bottom line goals, profits, planet, and people. Whether you are considering getting started on a digital transformation in manufacturing or already have one underway, it's fine to start small, focus, and drive success. But you should also think big about the potential impacts of these solutions and how to take full advantage of the capabilities they provide. That's it for today's webinar. In the coming weeks, we'll be covering a number of great topics on our web webinar Wednesdays. Be sure to go to the Visual Decisions website to register for them today. Thank you very much.